joined now by the Transport Secretary, Anne-Marie Trevelyan. Ms Trevelyan, thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Did the Chief Whip resign last night? Uh, so you've just answered your own question there. You have uh, reassured everyone that uh, Wendy Morton and indeed Craig Whitaker, her deputy, uh, are still in post, which is good news. They are uh, no, uh, that wasn't my question. Uh, important members of the government. Didn't ask you that. Did she resign last night? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. So she didn't resign at any stage and then was convinced to be back in post? So uh, I, I wasn't there. I voted uh, early in the lobbies and then had uh, important uh, security issues to deal with uh, at the Department of Transport. Uh, so uh, I didn't follow the machinations in detail. I'm afraid I was busy doing my job. Uh, but as it's clear, uh, they are both uh, in post and that's good news. Is it appropriate that MPs are manhandled? Uh, I, uh, well, as I say, I wasn't there, but I have seen Not the, uh, point. the photographs well, that... Just, uh, Mr Trevelyan, it's going to be much easier well, if, if you let, answer the question. If you'll let me answer the question, Kay, I will. Uh, I don't on, think then. it's ever acceptable uh, for uh, any party, and we have seen this happen before, where uh, whips perhaps uh, over-egg uh, their encouragement to get people to vote in the appropriate way. That is, uh, that is never right. The one thing that uh, our Parliament is... Uh, so uh, revered around the world for is that we allow uh, each of us to vote with our conscience uh, and indeed with our government on important matters. Yesterday was an opposition day debate uh, and uh, we uh, won that debate and the opposition day uh, vote, lost their vote. OK, do you condemn whoever manhandled people through the lobby yesterday? So I have no doubt that Mr Speaker will uh, look into these issues and it is for him uh, to make the final determination. I haven't seen uh, any footage beyond uh, Chris Bryant's photograph, uh, but it is uh, never acceptable for people to be uh, manhandled or bullied uh, into voting. Do you, do you condemn whoever did it? Well, as I say, I uh, will leave it to Mr Speaker to... Uh, I'm asking do, you, uh, Mr Bellion. Well, as I've just said, it's never acceptable uh, for anyone to be handled. We should be able to vote uh, absolutely as we see fit on behalf of our constituents, uh, and they are the ones who hold us to account. Um, was it a vote of confidence in the Prime Minister? Uh, no, yesterday was an opposition day uh, debate and the Labour Party were trying to uh, use a uh, parliamentary tool to try and hijack the order paper. That is never acceptable. So what it was was a very important vote uh, to ensure that the government uh, did not allow Labour to do that. It's a tactic that has been used in the past uh, and previous governments have also always made sure uh, that those votes are not won by the opposition. What's going to happen to those MPs who didn't vote with the government? Uh, so I haven't spoken to uh, the Chief Whip this morning. I thought I might let her sleep in. Uh, the uh, situation is always very clear. The, the uh, par parliamentary uh, managers will uh, discuss with colleagues who uh, didn't vote with the three-line whip uh, why that was. Sometimes there are very specific uh, constituency reasons or indeed health reasons, uh, and I know that uh, the appropriate uh, discussions will go on, as they always do in these situations, uh, and if there is a sense that some uh, were doing so for uh, not reasonable reasons, uh, the appropriate uh, discipline will be enacted. But I would imagine most have very strong constituency reasons if they were unable to vote with the government. Apparently the Chief Whip didn't vote. So, as I say, I haven't seen the lists. Uh, it's quite often the case that uh, the whips themselves don't vote on both sides. That's quite common. OK. Um, Prime Minister didn't originally vote, but then we were told that she did vote. Um, and we were told by Downing Street, um, in fact, uh, tomorrow was told by Downing Street at 1.30 this morning, when you finally got your ducks in a row, that it was a confidence vote and the, the MPs that didn't vote with the government will be disciplined. Does that mean they'll lose the whip? Well, as I say, that will be... Uh, a decision that uh, the business managers make, no doubt, today as they speak to those, as is completely normal, uh, when uh, uh, colleagues don't vote uh, with the government uh, direction. Uh, those discussions are had, reasons are discussed as to why that was the case, uh, and discipline, uh, or indeed not, uh, delivered uh, accordingly. And we will let the uh, uh, whips office and uh, ministers do that in due course. Why did Suella Braverman get sacked? So uh, she resigned and her letter, which she put out yesterday, set out that she uh, felt that she had fallen uh, below uh, the standard by breaching the ministerial code, by allowing uh, documents to uh, be shared uh, before appropriately in an, in, in an unsecure way. Uh, and she felt that she had you know, let herself down and therefore, uh, as she is someone who has always uh, worked to the highest standards, she is a woman of integrity, she felt she had to step down. No, she was forced to step down, as we know. We can see that from the letter. Um, the Prime Minister, if she'd wanted her to stay, she would have stayed. Or perhaps it was Jeremy Hunt 
who wanted her to go, and then somebody who supports Rishi Sunak can be put in her post. So, uh, government uh, needs to uh, get on. Sue Weller resigned and uh, Grant Chaps was appointed. He is a man with uh, very broad experience uh, in many government posts. In fact, he was my predecessor in transport, uh, a man uh, who understands uh, the complexity and the seriousness uh, of security uh, issues, and I know that he will do a, an excellent job uh, in picking up and managing those important issues that the Home Office has to look after. He's also a man who said earlier on in the week that uh, the Prime Minister... For her to be able to remain in post, it would be like threading a needle in the dark. Well, uh, he wasn't a member of the government when he uh, was speaking <laughs> the other week. Now he is, and I have no doubt, because I know Grant very well, that he will be uh, an incredibly hard-working member of the Cabinet, and I shall look forward to working with him. Yeah, but he doesn't think she can survive as Prime Minister. He's a Trojan so horse. He is now... Uh, the, he is now the Home Secretary, uh, uh, which is an incredibly difficult uh, job, uh, and he will, I know, uh, get uh, right stuck into it today and make sure uh, that all those issues that we need to work on together to uh, protect our citizens, to work on those issues uh, uh, on the short straights, uh, the wider questions that we do in security uh, are ones that he is absolutely focused on. We have some really important and difficult issues that we are all dealing with and what we need to crack on with is making sure that we do that and Grant will be a great addition to the team. OK, so just to clarify for me, what was it that first attracted the Prime Minister to the rebel supporting, uh, Rishi supporting um, uh, backbencher? Sorry, I didn't... I didn't I said, sorry, you went crackly on me. Sorry, OK. OK, I was just asking what first attracted the Prime Minister to uh, a rebel uh, who had been rallying the troops against the Prime Minister, who's also a Rishi supporter. Why on earth would she put him in one of the great uh, positions of office? So, uh, I, I would imagine, I haven't had a chance to remember that what she wanted was someone with uh, experience who would be able to uh, come in and manage the incredibly difficult issues that uh, the Home Office has to deal with every single day. It's a 24-7 job, that one. Uh, and Grant has, as I say, enormous government experience. He obviously uh, was uh, Transport Secretary before I was, and uh, she will know that he can, uh, at you know, very short notice, pick up the reins and manage the many complex issues that there are there, including, of course, uh, you know, dealing with the short straights, an issue that I'm going to be working closely with on those maritime security questions. Steve Baker... Uh, who is an influential backbencher, as you as you know, but just for the benefit uh, of our viewers, went uh, on TV yesterday speaking to one of my colleagues, saying that he'd been told by Downing Street to say that Suella Braverman would be back in post by January. So, uh, I'm afraid I didn't see that, and I'm not part of that. What I uh, can see and know is the case is that Grant uh, is Home Secretary and that we all in government, in uh, the Prime Minister's Cabinet, are focused absolutely uh, on uh, supporting Jeremy Hunt to uh, stabilise the finances so that uh, we uh, can get on with delivering the services that are so important to our constituents, making sure that having uh, determined to, to fund the energy price guarantee, not only for our uh, constituents and in homes, but also for all our businesses, so that we didn't see a catastrophic uh, failure of our SMEs in particular, uh, that we make sure that we demonstrate to the city how we're funding that uh, and continue to deliver those frontline services that are so important to our constituents. People up and down the country, as you've just been saying there, are struggling to feed their kids. And we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, politicians who are pushing and shoving each other. Um, somebody... <clears throat> who has been criticising the Prime Minister uh, only a few days ago, is now in one of the most important offices of state. Two senior uh, cabinet ministers have uh, been sacked in less than a week. Um, it's embarrassing. So politics is about uh, looking forwards and delivering, and that's what we need to do. There are many very difficult situations ahead. Obviously, we have uh, the support that we continue to give uh, to our Ukrainian friends as uh, the ongoing uh, Russian invasion and those battles uh, you know, come into the winter months, and that's why uh, the Defence Secretary uh, has been in Washington working with our US allies uh, to support that. We have to uh, make sure we can uh, deliver this energy price guarantee so that... Uh, you and I, and indeed everyone, uh, more importantly, who are vulnerable and who are managing uh, tight budgets, uh, know that this government is working alongside them. Uh, I was pleased to hear uh, the triple lock for our uh, pensioners uh, confirmed yesterday uh, on the uh, 
uh, levels of inflation. These are really important matters, and what we have to do is work together, uh, and government is absolutely focused on delivering for our people. I am, of course, today, OK, bringing in uh, minimum service levels, le service levels legislation, uh, which will ensure that even uh, if there are strikes, there cannot be uh, an ability to bring down completely our transport networks. This is really important to support those, exactly as you say, those hardworking people who need to get to work, uh, nurses getting to a shift, uh, children getting to school, business people getting uh, to their business meetings. These are uh, situations that we, we cannot allow uh, our, our transport systems to a grind to a halt. So we're bringing this in so that we have a fair focus on those who use the services uh, that we provide to make sure uh, okay. that they can always keep moving. These are really important uh, okay. government yep. activities which will keep us uh, keeping the country moving and growing. OK. Mr Rebellion, I know you to be a woman of honour. Are you not embarrassed a little bit this morning about what went on yesterday? Uh, as I say, I wasn't in the lobbies, but I am uh, shocked to uh, hear the, des the descriptions of what went on. As I say, uh, we are uh, well respected across the world as a parliament where democracy uh, and freedom is at the heart of what we do. And I hope that uh, Mr Speaker will be investigating closely, as I'm sure uh, he will, to ensure uh, that uh, these... these uh, scenes uh, and indeed the situations do not happen again. What I want to make sure we do also is deliver uh, for our constituents. That's what's so important. We need to grow our economy. We need to ensure that we can deliver the incredibly important public services, that we can uh, draw in with investment so that business can grow uh, because it is with growth. The <laughs> Prime Minister is absolutely right. With growth uh, that we can do more for our constituents, for our fantastic public services. OK. I'm going on holiday for a fortnight tomorrow. Will this Trust still be Prime Minister when I get back? I believe you'll find she will be, yes, Kate. Let's see, let's see. It's good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Nice indeed. to see you. And you.